Apple's 16 inch MacBook Pro is an exceptional machine that caters well to Apple's audience. But for those that are platform agnostic or prefer just to shop around, we're going to compare Apple's brand new 16 inch MacBook Pro to the comparable Lenovo X1 Extreme Gen 2. Let's go ahead and dive into it in this in-depth comparison. And at the end, we're going to show you our exclusive discounts and how you can save some money on both of these two impressive machines. Starting out on the Lenovo side of things, the model that we picked up has a 15.6 inch display. It comes equipped with a six core, 2.6 gigahertz i7 processor, 32 gigs of DDR4 RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Max-Q 4 gig graphics. That stacks up well against our 16 inch MacBook Pro which comes with its own 2.6 gigahertz quad core i7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and an AMD Radeon Pro 5300M graphic set, and a 500 gig SSD. When it comes to ports, Apple keeps things simple. There are four Type-C Thunderbolt 3 ports and a simple headphone jack split evenly between the two sides of the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Lenovo went with a much more varied port representation. The X1 has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, a power input, an HDMI 2.0 port, an SD card reader, two USB-A ports, and an RJ45 via Ethernet adapter, which is actually sold separately and is a proprietary port. If you're one who is going to be insisting on USB-A ports, then the Lenovo X1 is definitely the way to go. MacBook Pro just doesn't have any of those, but there's no shortage of adapters or dongles to accommodate those who are okay with the Type-C ports. In fact, for a lot of things, just swap the cord. Buy a new cord for your hard drive, your printer, whatever it is that you have to plug in. A lot of times those exist out there and don't cost more than just a few bucks. Now let's talk about design. These two machines are vastly different. Apple's is pretty much its same old usual aesthetic. An aluminum body with the Apple logo there on the front, ports split evenly between the two sides. Now Apple does have a massive trackpad on here, which is pretty great. It is not only huge, but you can press down anywhere on its surface. It doesn't matter where you press down, you can still click and feel that taptic feedback. Whereas you move over to the Lenovo, it has a much more business-like design. It's matte black, it's much more kind of uh, subtle in its design and it still has a good trackpad but you can only press it towards the bottom the base side of it that gets more of a traditional springboard design now aside from just being able to press at the bottom there's a bunch of additional buttons that you can use so if you don't want to have to press on there you want the actual physical buttons at the top Lenovo's got that it has additional buttons there and there's the little mouse pointer nub in the center of the keyboard a lot of people love that and using that mouse pointer in the middle of the keyboard is a thing that just no one else is going to be able to do. Lenovo's got that. So if that's something that you appreciate and you love to see on your keyboard, then you have to go with Lenovo. There's no even debate about it. And you use the mouse so much, it's such a you know, crucial piece of input for your machine that could be a huge deciding factor for a lot of people out there. Another design difference to consider is the keyboard. So Apple has its latest generation keyboard on the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. It's going to be a lot more reliable, but has very shallow key travel. Now, we spent a lot of time typing on them and we're fine with it. We don't mind the reduced key travel, but if you want a little bit more movement in your keys, then check out Lenovo. Lenovo has significantly more key travel when you're actually typing on them and it's louder, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, we'll leave up to you. Some people like the clickety click of a keyboard. Other people want it to be a little more quiet, a little more subdued. They don't like making as much noise in the classroom or in the office. So it depends on whether you want the more louder keyboard or you want the quieter keyboard of Apple's. Another difference between them, and this is we definitely have a preference on, it's the backlight. Apple's backlight is so well done. There's little to no light bleed around the keys themselves. But looking at the Lenovo, there's significant light bleed. If you're sitting back a little bit, you can see all the light coming through behind the keys and it can get a little bit annoying in dimmer situations. So even though they're a little bit higher key travel, it's allowing more of that light to leak through. So definitely a trade-off between the two keyboards. As far as the displays go, Apple has a larger display and a higher pixel density than the Lenovo. Lenovo is a standard 16.9 aspect ratio and 5.6 inches in size and comes out to 141 PPI at just 1920 by 1080. On the Mac side of things, it's 3072 by 1920 and gives you a pixel density of 226, significantly higher. 
The other big difference between the two is Apple opts for that glossy display, whereas the Lenovo uses a matte finish. Depending on where you're using this, this could be a huge deal because that glare from the lights can be a pain in the butt. If you're using this outside, you're probably gonna want that matte finish a lot more than the Mac. Then again, you're probably gonna be using this inside rather than outside, so you may prefer the glossy finish because colors are so much more vibrant. Movies look so much better on the glossy display rather than the matte. Again, this is personal preference, but just a difference between the two that you have to decide which you prefer and how important that is. Now it's time to talk actual performance. These things are very similarly spec'd, so we should see similar numbers in Geekbench 5, Cinebench, and our NVIDIA encoding test. So starting off with the X1 and Cinebench, we earned a score of 2530 on Cinebench R20 and a 1249 single core and a 5467 multi-core on Geekbench 5.1. When we run those same tests on the MacBook Pro, it slightly performed on the single core on Geekbench 5, only earning a 1069, but outperformed on the multi-core with a 5639. On Cinebench R20, the MacBook Pro scored a 2788, quite a bit above the X1 Extreme. So why the big difference in the Cinebench R20 scores? It's likely to do with cooling. The Apple machine was actually able to keep its higher speed for a longer sustained period of time, whereas on the Lenovo, those fans kicked in very quickly. Side point, the fans are loud on the Lenovo. They are very loud and all of it's coming out kind of from the bottom of the machine. So if you have this on a soft surface, it's gonna be a problem. Apple machine kept cool for longer and when the fans did kick into full gear, they were significantly quieter than they were on the Lenovo. So if you're a video editor or anyone dealing with sound and want more of a quiet machine, then definitely lean towards the Mac. We also did our video encoding test. So there are a couple things to take into account here, but the main thing we're looking at is using Apple's uh, video toolkit. It's their uh, low level system framework that allows developers really tap in to the machine and get the most out of it. So we're gonna test that on the Mac side of things. We also have QuickSync from Intel, which is a prevalent on both the Mac and the PC here. So they're both using QuickSync, which is literally just into the processors and it allows you to get a lot better video encoding capabilities. And then Apple also has the video toolbox, which adds even more there. And they have that T2 chip, which not just does security and the touch bar and all of that, but can help with video encoding. So we ran our normal video encoding test. We use a raw master file of an Apple Insider video. We dropped that into Handbrake and we exported on both of them to see how they would do with a custom preset that takes advantage of all those capabilities. The Lenovo took four minutes and 18 seconds, while the MacBook Pro was able to knock it out in only two minutes and 22 seconds. There's a pretty huge difference between the two machines. So if video is your goal, then we'd highly recommend the Mac over the PC in this situation. Though you can of course add your own eGPU over Thunderbolt 3 to either machine and increase that graphics prowess even more. So how do you decide between these two capable machines? Well, a lot of times as it does, it comes down to simply Mac versus PC and what your preference is. It doesn't even have to be preference. Sometimes you just need a Windows PC for an office environment or something else. If you need a Windows PC, you need a Windows PC. There's no point debating about it. And the Lenovo X1 Extreme is a very capable machine if that's what you're looking for. At the same time, there are differences between the two. So if you're platform agnostic and you don't care, you just want the better machine, you need to look at the comparison and decide what of these features is more important to you. So on the Mac side of things, it has more Thunderbolt 3 ports, great but the Lenovo has a more varied set of ports on there. So you don't have to worry about adapters, dongles, anything like that. So if you're looking for more ports, then go with the Lenovo. If Thunderbolt 3 and future-proofing is more important, go with the Mac. Same thing with the displays. The Mac has a higher resolution display. It's a glossy display, but if that's not your thing, if you want that matte finish, because that's more important, then go with that one, but you're not getting as high resolution. If you're looking for raw performance or video capabilities, again, you have to side with the Mac. And sometimes it comes just down to what ecosystem you prefer. Do you have an iPhone? Do you have an iPad? Then maybe the Mac is the better choice because it integrates so well. You have Siri integrated on there and you can easily move between all your devices just seamlessly. Same thing with your AirPods, just moving between all of your devices. It works so well over on the Mac. So both of these machines are extremely capable. The Lenovo is a great machine. It has a very well-known look. It's very prevalent in a lot of offices and people love this machine. You have more options. The keyboard has more movement to it. There's additional buttons around the trackpad that make it a little bit easier that you don't have to press the trackpad for. You have so many more ports on there. It has facial recognition to authenticate as well as fingerprint based authentication like the Mac does. So there's a lot more options there as well. Really, it's preference. 
Now, regardless of which one you guys want, you can save some serious cash using the exclusive Apple Insider deals. So how do you get these deals? Well, B&H is knocking up to $250 off of Apple's MacBook Pro and Lenovo's X1 Extreme. So follow the links and the instructions down below in the description. Make sure you follow them exactly to make sure that you can get these exclusive discounts that you're gonna get nowhere else. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think. Let me know which one you prefer over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, we'll catch you in the next video. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later.